John chapter 16, verse 7. It reads, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Illuminate it in our minds and let our hearts capture and keep it in Jesus' name. Amen. Say the word. Say the word. Say the word of the Lord settles us. Now, if you look, if, let's go back there, John, 7, John 16. We are going to do a number of other scriptures, amen? But we're starting in John 16. It reads again. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Say the truth. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Say neighbor. Jesus says, I'm telling you the truth. So if it is Jesus that says, I'm telling you the truth, Jesus is the truth. So in other words, Jesus says, I am bringing myself to you. Amen. And everything that's going to follow after that, it is him bringing himself to us. So he says, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go. Say advantage. advantage. Tell your neighbor advantage. advantage. Say it is to my advantage that the Lord has to go ahead to go. So we, we, we all understand this. Uh, Sunday, Sunday, when was it? When are we? When are we? Where? Thursday was Ascension Day, and the Lord on the Ascension. It is that day where He was taken up on the cloud, and on Ascension Day, it is when He gave gifts to men. And before He did that, He prepared His disciples, and this is one of the things He said to His disciples. There's a number of things He said. There's a number of instructions He gave. There's mentors He gave to the disciples and to the people that there right up until to us in who are living today now we need to pay attention to that because then we have a reason to appreciate his ascension and we have a reason to appreciate in thanksgiving his ascension all right so when jesus said it is to your advantage that i go away jesus was saying to them you have a benefit with my going away let's work with the word advantage if you have an advantage let me make an example um every every young person every child who grows in the in the in a family where they naturally speak english and then John goes to school, at home they naturally speak English because that's who they are. So they understand the concept, doesn't only understand the language, he understands the concept. He doesn't only understand the concept and the language, understands the culture, doesn't only understand the concept, the language and the culture, understands the presentation, what is encapsulated in the language as an English. Making sense to somebody? Now, there is little John going to Queens at school and goes to school with Tando. Tando comes from extension eight. Tando is going to learn to is going to learn to write, read, think and present English. But Tando has not an advantage over Johnny because Johnny has an advantage over Tando because when Johnny goes to school he is normal in speaking English. He is normal in understanding including the jokes in English. He is normal in understanding including the expressions in English. But Tando has got to learn just the language first even before he can understand the culture, even before he can understand how what they mean by what and the expressions in English. Am I making sense to somebody? Now if all these children has come to this school, there's others who have advantage and there's others who did not have advantage. Would you kindly give me just about five, six, six young people join me on the stage here. Go back, go back, all of you, same line. Now I'm going to ask you questions. Every time the answer to you is yes, you've got to take a step forward. Move back a bit, come closer, move back, right. Now, when you were born, did you have your mother and your father staying in the same house? If your answer is yes, take a step forward. When you were born, in your home, did they have a car to take you to school? 
step forward if your answer is yes. When you were born, did your mom or your father take you to school themselves and step forward in the car? When you were born and when you were about age 11, was your mom and dad working? We're looking at advantage, right? As you understand your mother and your father, could they flow in English between your age five and age seven? Take proper steps forward, they're catching up with you. And as you were growing and you started school, did you go to a Model C or previously advantage school called Model C? Do you see the advantage? Do you see? This is how advantage works. These people were born primarily in the same time. But advantage sets others apart. Advantage gives others a head start. Thank you. Be seated. Now, because of they who had advantage, did we see the little girl that was standing had not moved an inch? But she is living at the same time, she is living at the same bracket, she is the same generation as the rest of them. But in that generation of those children, there are those who by the nature of where they born, who gave birth to them, they are already advantaged. They are, there's nothing they have done for themselves. I did not ask if they drove the car. I did not ask if they have done anything to end any of those things. It comes standard with them that they come advantage by the virtue of the surname where they were born. Amen. Am I making sense to somebody? Now, Jesus is saying to these disciples, if I do not go, you will not have a head start. These ones that, were, that came really ready to the front, they had a head start in life and in life compared to the other ones who did not move. Do you understand what I'm saying? So they had a head start. They are starting life all together, but these ones are starting life miles ahead of others. Come with me. Imagine... There's a, there's a daughter getting married and the pastor is doing sales to the couple, the newly wedding couple, says you may kiss the bride. And just before the pastor could say, let us, uh, let us pray and release them. Right at that point, a Mrs. Tandogazi Skabai uh, comes and says, Fundis, just wait a minute. I've got something to give to my daughter as my daughter is just about to get married. And Mrs. Skabai gives the pastor a key to a house, a paid up house with four garages, a swimming pool, and six bedroom home, and with two cars inside that house, and everything you will ever need in the house furnished. How long does it take to pay for a house? At least what? 20 years, right? And how much roughly a furniture of a seven bedroom will cost you? Good furniture, because by the size of the house, you can suspect the wealth of the giver. So, roughly furniture to furnish that kind of home, um, work it like you're furnishing a BNB, because that's the size of a BNB. And but to somebody, it's a home. That would be somewhat like a half a million. Am I right? No, I saw a table that was 120,000, a table, dining room table. So, you're looking at about 1.2 million just to finish. And then inside the garage, there's two cars. And it's not starter pets, it's not gas, and it's not Polo Vivo. And these cars, maybe it's just a starter pack of like uh, two series. BMW just to get children started and a big class. Convertible. G 
GLB. So how much is that? That's another three million, right? So what has these parents done right now? How long does it take to pay for a car? Five years, they say, right? So each car is five years to pay here, and the house is 20 years to pay here. And then down the road, this side of the road, there's another wedding that is happening at the same time. Same age group is getting married. And when the, when the wedding is done there, these guys, they took, they took a loan to even go and lobola. They took a loan to do this wedding. This dress she is wearing, she must take it back because it is higher. And the shoes this man is wearing is still pay, going to pay for them at, at, at markets. And their loan for the whole thing is just about 500,000 to Lobana to do the wedding and to start a family. So these ones are behind by 500,000. Do you understand that? Do you see that? But these ones, what has just happened? Their mom has given them 30 years advantage. He, she did not give them a house. She did not give them furniture. She did not give them cars. She, give, she gave them time worth of advantage 30 years ahead of others. And these ones are set back by a good five years as they start. Am I with somebody? Do you understand that? Now, 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 Jesus says, maybe you have been, you were taken five years back into disadvantage. Jesus is then saying, it doesn't matter how far you have been drawn back. It doesn't matter how much you have been disadvantaged. When the Holy Spirit comes, as I go to heaven, I am going to bring to you an advantage that is going to set you ahead, that is going to buy back for you the time you have lost and every season you have lost and every asset you have lost and every meaning of life you have lost the pain you went through I am bringing to you Holy Spirit who is the comforter who is going to comfort you and set you apart and pull you ahead into an advantage what you could not do in 10 years I am telling you when the Holy Spirit who is an advantage is going to give you some ideas he's going to escalate you he's going to advantage you he's going to give you favor as with a shield what you could not do in 10 years I'm giving you one year to achieve all of that because I am giving you an advantage I am going to bring you an advantage and if I do not go the helper will not come oh hallelujah oh hallelujah for those of us who were born at the backyard of somebody else and we went to school at Taleni when no not when including the teacher will teach you English in his course and yet God knows that in your life you're going to be preaching in Australia in your life you're going to be preaching in New Zealand in your life you're going to be preaching in UK in your life you're going to Canada and you come to UK you to USA and you must preach in English but you are busy growing up in Google to speaking is a cause that is already mixed up and you have no idea how you come to preach to these white people and you lay hands on them my God says I'm going to hook you up with a missionary child who has spoken English from day one I'm going to hook you up with that young man to make sure that when you try from the airport you go to read English out loud until you learn how to do English until you learn how to project yourself you go to stop wringing your fingers and pulling your sleeves when you see the people of other culture I'm going to make sure that you marry that young man because inside that marriage there is my advantage What is it that you cannot recognize that the Lord 
has put to you as an advantage. You may have been ready to leave this church because you don't see it, but allow me to point it out to you. The Lord says, you are at an advantage. The Lord is giving you what? Say, I'm advantaged. I have a heard first advantage. Say, look at it this way. The things that I am taught here, if I were to be diligent in doing everything that I am taught here and go home and write them down and make a strategy from just an advantage and understanding that advantage comes with favor. Amen. The spelling of advantage is the same spelling as favor. Because God says, where you have not been favored, for where you have been refused, where you have been rejected, where you have been pushed away and pushed aside, where you have been marginalized and ostracized and name tagged, the Lord says, I'm giving you my name and I'm putting my name on you and I'm putting myself on you and I'm advantaging you with me. And when your name is mentioned, I am mentioned. And since I'm the greater one, when your name is mentioned, the greater one is mentioned. I will calm your nerves. I will comfort you on every side, including this side. Say I'm advantaged. Say I'm advantaged. I am favored. Next time you say I am highly favored, put it with an understanding. Put it with the knowledge and an understanding that when I say I am highly favored, I'm simply referring to the one who is higher than it all, who has then favored me. I'm not just saying the favor is high. I'm saying he who dwells in the burning bush is the one who has favored me with an I am wherever I come. Because he who dwells in the burning bush is the one who favors me coming in and favors me going out, who among the multitudes says to me, this is the one that is favored, that one, that one, that one, where are the qualifications, forget qualifications, I want that one, where, are, where where's his CV, where's the CV for that one, forget the CV, I want that one, and where, but then you have already said there's no position, position are close, we are creating a position for that one, we're making things possible because we are speaking to the advantage person, if somebody must get out and somebody come in, it is to your advantage that I go. Yes. Say advantage. advantage. Now but God says, if I do not go, it is because the disciples, there's something they did not see. The disciples did not see the necessity of the Jesus they love so much. Because we get, naturally as human beings, we get attached and we get sentimental. Now, one thing that will pin you down from your forward movement is sentimental attachment. You can be attached to a place, you can be attached to a position, you can be attached to, and, and remember, including pain knows how to mutate itself, and it feels normal and natural for you to live your life at this level, and yet what brought you to this level was pain. And you settle at pain level because there's a difference between a mutated pain and a felt pain. While you're feeling the pain, you're throwing tantrums, you're crying, you're trusting God, you're taking fasting, you're asking God, you believe in God, and the pain subsides because human beings were never designed to sustain pain for too long. So when you don't feel that pain, it doesn't mean it's gone. When you don't feel the pain of not meeting your month end demands, when you don't feel it anymore because you're adjusted and adapted to the level of finances where you are, you don't feel that pain anymore. And therefore you don't put much pressure on the demanding from God. You don't put much pressure in your fasting. You don't put much pressure in your prayers. You don't put much pressure in waking yourself up and waking yourself up and getting yourself out of that bed at three o'clock because you are looking forward to another you have settled in your pain they did not see the need to move on they did not see why Jesus should change the things this is comfortable Jesus we can be with you whenever can't you see a big miracle a great miracle has just happened you were dead but now you are 
are here. Now you want to mess that up again? You appear and disappear on us? Is it not comfortable that Lord Jesus, was it not such a big thing that you died? Was it not a great thing that you rose again? And you have taken things back to where they are. We are still trying to figure out how does it happen for you to just appear and the doors are all are closed. We are still trying to figure out the people that were dead but now are alive. They are seen in the streets. We are still trying to figure out that Lord God, you are walking among us. We see, we see the wounds in your hands. Lord Jesus, now you want to change that while we are still bragging about you having raised from the dead and now you are going away. You want to disturb this great and beautiful move that God has done among us. And the Lord says, it is to your advantage that I disturb what you are used to because your next success is not dependent on your today's success. If you hold on on your today's success and allow your today's success to pin you down, you will miss out on what I have for you tomorrow. And what I have for you tomorrow depends on what you let go of now. So Jesus says, it is to your advantage that I go. Because when I'm gone, I'm bringing in, I'm bringing in investors. When I'm gone, I'm cooking up with great people in high places who suddenly say, we've got to record this time for real. When I'm gone, I'm hooking up with great people who are going to solve the debts of this place, the debts of your home, the debts of your children, the debts of the place where you, when you are gone, when I'm gone, it is to your advantage because I am changing your rent value when I, when I am gone. When I'm gone, I am changing the way you live, the way you express. When I am gone, I am bringing in a different level of advantage so that that which took us far behind at COVID time by five years, we lost revenue, you lost loved ones, you lost your job, you lost work, you lost people who used to sit here and tithe and offer and you're struggling to return, you're struggling to bounce back, you're struggling with everything and the Lord says, it is good for you that I go away so that when I come back, I come back with help from the helper. Hey, to tell your neighbor, it's for my benefit. It is for my advantage, it's to my advantage that the Lord, that God, now he says, he says to these disciples, he says, uh, 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 you know, brother Thomas, brother Thomas, have you ever noticed that the disciples of Jesus, there was not one rabbi there? There was not one rabbi. All the disciples of Jesus Christ came from other, uh, others were, others were fisher, Others were fishers, others were farmers, others were Dr. Luku, others were tax collectors, and fine. all those interesting things. Not one rabbi that was the disciple of Jesus Christ. Check who you surround yourself with for your forward movement. And among those people, there's two guys that I love the most. There's Deacon.
you have an advantage. You know, when a home team is playing on its home ground, it's called an advantage. And Jesus says, as you have heard, that it is to your advantage that I go and I'll send you a helper. I just want you to know that today, as you receive him as Lord and Savior of your life, it is an advantage because when you have him as an advantage, he will lead you into everlasting life. Whatever the Lord does, it's permanent. Whatever the Lord says, it's permanent. But please, I appeal to you this morning, take Jesus into your heart and he is an advantage to everlasting life. And may the Lord bless you. If you do so, please pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you because I believe you died and you rose again. You did that for my advantage. I now acknowledge that advantage and I personalize it. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for coming into my heart. I now repent from all my wicked ways and I choose to follow you. And this, again, is to my advantage. And I thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. If you have prayed this prayer, you have the advantage of the